Hello everyone, it's time for week 11 of our freshman English course. This is Professor Gray with you and welcome back. Let's get right to work, shall we? Um, we had reading, uh, sorry, writing homework uh, on page 125. Uh, it was very well done. Some of you had some very good answers, uh, which I enjoyed reading. Uh, let's talk about that for a moment. Uh, why did, why was Alfred Nobel called a salesman of death by the reporter? Well, you know, Alfred Nobel invented dynamite. He intended it for good use. He also made a lot of money, became very wealthy, and the dynamite was used, of course, in war and uh, caused a lot of death and damage. So there was good and bad to it, like many things. There are good points and bad points. So I think one reason is it's just, it's a very deadly, dangerous thing. Uh, if it's not used carefully or properly, it can kill people or hurt people. It was used in war uh, by, you know, armies to kill people. And also military, militaries would use dynamite to build bridges and roads to help them kill people. Uh, dynamite's bad for the environment, I guess. You know, it can't be good for the environment to change the, the environment by exploding and blowing things up. That can't be a good thing, I'm sure. I'm sure when you explode dynamite, there are, you know, animals that can die. Uh, but one thing <clears throat> is to, to consider <clears throat> is the fact that, uh, you know, reporters often sensationalize the news. When you sensationalize something, you make it very exciting, more than it should be. And so I think, um, I think the reporter wanted the story to sound more you know, angry or more negative or more exciting. So people would read it, would buy the newspaper and so on. Um, I, I'm, I, can, I feel pretty confident that is part of it. Uh, that's common in newspaper reporting. But there are legitimate reasons to have a negative view about Nobel and dynamite at that point. Number three, Nobel established the Nobel Prize so people would remember him as a man of peace. Can you think of another reason why he wanted to give prizes to people who were leaders in their fields? Well, again, lots of good, uh, lots of good reasons. A lot of you said words like motivation, incentive, um, you know, for people to work hard. Um, legacy, he wanted to have a positive legacy, to leave a positive legacy for the world, not a negative one. Now, Dynamite had positive and negative points, but the, the um, Nobel Prize is pretty positive. It encourages people, it motivates them to work hard, do things that are good for people. Uh, you know, the Peace Prize, you know, encourage world peace. Uh, and the scientific prizes are are obviously to help make our lives better. Literature, right? Great art. Uh, that's, you know, good for humanity. Um, he had no children. He had no children and no family. Remember, his brother had already died. Uh, well, uh, uh, had already died. Ludwig had already died years before. And so I think that's one reason he had nobody else to give the money to. Um, he wanted people to be recognized, honored. Um, and, you know, he had this negative experience as a scientist. Of course, he was a scientist, engineer, and he created something that, that is useful, that we still use today. A very good thing. But he, had re he was reacted to in a very negative way by many people. And he didn't want other scientists to feel discouraged. You know, uh, I don't want to, you know, invent something. I might get, you know, people might be very negative about me. This kind of thing. He didn't want other scientists to have the same negative experience. He wanted them to be encouraged to work hard for science, for in science, for people. I think that's part of it as well. All right, again, good work. Let, let's get, uh, move forward now. We're... Moving in, uh, we're in the middle of chapter 10, and the homework began on page 138. D, dictionary skills. Uh, number one, react. The professor gave American and Brazilian students an example, 
and ask them how they would react, how they would um, respond. Uh, number one, speak or move when something happens. How do you respond? How do you react? What do you say? How do you move? Uh, a, so first one, circle number one. Uh, and then A, the professor gave American and Brazilian students an example and asked them how they would respond in this situation. Circle number one and then circle, circle answer A. Number two, discover, to learn or to find out um, or to see something the, that no one knew before, like discovering a planet or a new animal or plant or to invent something, uh, discovered penicillin, invented penicillin. But here, an American professor discovered this difference while teaching a class at a Brazilian university. This is definition one, to find out, to realize, to notice. Uh, and C, an American professor found out, found out, discovered this difference while teaching a class in a Brazilian university. So number two is definition one, answer C. Word forms, part one. In English, verbs change to nouns in several ways. Some verbs become nouns by adding the suffix a-t-i-o-n. For example, combine, verb, combination, noun. Complete each sentence with the correct form of the words on the left. Okay, correct tense of the verb. Fu uh, uh, future tense, past tense, present tense. Uh, so you must check the tense this time, very important. Positive or negative for the verb, and then singular or plural for the noun. Number one, next year a big film company will adapt. Next year, future, will adapt. Uh, is going to adapt is okay. The adaptation, so will adapt and the adaptation. Number two, Chris is studying at the university for a degree in interpretation, noun. When he graduates, now he is studying now, when he graduates is future. So in the future, he will interpret. Um, is going to again as possible. But it must be future or it's wrong. Number three, most people have high expectations with an S. You don't say high ex a high expectation, maybe, but there's no a. High expectations must be S, must be plural. When they visit another country, they don't expect to have a bad time. Of course not. They want to enjoy themselves. Expectations, don't expect. Number four, Susie is in the park now. She is observing the behavior of pigeons or she observes, either one. Present tense, she is observing. Okay, probably that's best. But she observes, also okay. She records all her observations. All means plural. Observations with an S in a special notebook. Number five, we needed an explanation. Now, an explanation of the difference. The teacher explained, ED, the difference, and we understood. We needed past. We understood past. The teacher explained past. Part two, some English verbs become nouns by adding the suffix ing. For example, feel becomes feeling. Okay, again, correct tense, future, past, present, positive, negative, singular, plural. Be careful. Everything must be right or your answer is wrong. Aaron's Allen, number one, Allen spelled ED, several words incorrectly on his composition yesterday, past, spelled ED. Composition is paper. Your, your essay, your report, your paper. He has to check the spelling now. Number two, Andrew didn't understand anything. Okay, Momo, anything, negative, not anything. I did not like anything. He did not eat anything. Andrew did not, didn't understand anything. However, his understanding will improve during the semester. Didn't understand understanding. Number three, please don't tell me the ending of this mystery story, ending. I want to guess how the story uh, will end, or you could just say ends, both are okay. I want to guess how the story ends, with an S, or how the story will end, either one. Number four, 
Hi, hello, how are you? Our common greetings, three of them, S, greetings. In the US, most people also greet each other with a smile. Number five, our department has 10 monthly meetings. 10 is plural, meetings with an S. 10 monthly meetings. So we momo during May or December, or, so both, one, two. 10 monthly meetings, five, 10, plus two equals 12. 12 months in a year, so we don't meet during May or December, not May or December, both May, December, no. So meetings with an S and don't meet, negative, May or December. F, vocabulary and context. Number one, appropriate, appropriate clothes, proper, correct, right, Number two, wearing shorts in a mosque is unacceptable. No, you cannot wear shorts in a mosque. Mosque is Islam Gyo, Islam Gyo Hai. Number three, prestige. Doctors have high status, high prestige, high respect. Number four, greets. Greg greets people. Number five, rude. It was very rude of Martin to ask Mrs. Barnes her age. <clears throat> Shouldn't ask old people their age. Being punctual is important. Punctual on time, punctual. Number seven, adapt, to adapt to the change in light, to adjust to, your eyes need to adapt, to adjust when there's a sudden change in light. Number eight, it is very cold in Antarctica. In fact, it is the coldest place on earth. In fact, plus unusual uh, information, special, interesting information, not just Kunyang information. In fact, it is the coldest place on earth. Very unique, special, interesting uh, information. You know, Antarctica, uh, the Arctic in the north, Bukuk, Antarctic, Namguk. Uh, it's interesting because ant, A-N-T means ante, like not. So Arctic, not Arctic. Arctic, not Arctic. Arctic, Antarctic. But Arctic actually means bear, gom. Because in the north you have bear, bukuk gom. Nam gom, obsoyo. So, Arctic, no Arctic bear. Antarctic, no bear. Interesting. Number nine, she apologized. And number 10, behavior. Mark's behavior uh, is very bad, it sounds like. I, close quiz. This was also uh, homework. Now, I'm really quickly, I don't want to read the whole thing. We've read it already. So number one, punctual. Number two, difference. Number three, ended. Number four, greeted. Number five, rude. Number six, behavior. Number seven, formal. Number eight, appointment. Number nine, hand. Number 10, in contrast, contrast. Number 11, nor, neither nor. Number 12, only. Number 13, neither. Number 14, late. Number 15, fact. Number 16, status. Number 17, unacceptable. Number 18, misinterpret. Number 19, instead. And number 20, adapt. Adapt, adjust, change. Any questions, please ask me in your email. One more thing for chapter 10. Page 142, Bek Sashipi, G, Critical Thinking Strategies. Your homework, written homework this week, number one and number two. <clears throat> number one, how do you think the professor adapted his behavior in Brazil? What did he do? What actions? Okay, two, I want you to give me two ideas what did the professor do? How did he adapt? What did he do to change while he was in Brazil? Two examples, two answers, two ideas. Number two, why do you think the professor changed his behavior? Why didn't he try to change the Brazilian student's behavior? Well, he's the professor, so it's his class. So he can tell the students that you must do this in my class, right? They're his students, he's the professor, they must follow him, but he didn't. Okay, he chose not to, that's fine. Why, why did the professor decide to 
change his own behavior and not tell the students to change theirs. Again, two. Two answers or two, two thoughts, two ideas, two reasons why. And that's your written homework. Be sure that's in your email when you send me your email before 9 a.m. Thursday morning. Time to move on. We have two more chapters to study in our class, and we will start one of them this week. Chapter 11, page 145, Bek Sashipo. Technology competes, fighting against, for family time. Hmm. Look at the picture. Actually, there's two pictures. Look at the top picture, small one, where it says chapter 11. That family looks very happy. Mother and father and two children. They're smiling. Everybody's smiling. They're happy. They're together on the couch. I think they're watching TV together. So the technology is the television. The family is watching TV together. They look very happy. But look at the second picture. They don't look happy. The mother and daughter do not look happy. They are... Uh, the daughter, the mother is trying to talk to the daughter and look, notice the technology is in the middle. It's separating them. Mother, daughter, computer, right? Notebook, computer in the middle, separating the family. The TV in the first picture, everybody's together. It's uniting the family together. So TV and computers are very different. TV is very much more of a family technology. Computers are much more of an individual technology. And the, the mother is talking to the daughter and she has one earphone in and the other she pulled out. So the mother only gets one ear. She doesn't get two ears when she's talking to her daughter. Ooh, let's look at the story. Technology competes for family time. So I want you to read the story now page 146, 147, and answer part A, uh, number one through number 10, and then stop. Again, story and part A, and then stop after part A. So stop at the end of page 149. Okay, try to finish it, oh, you know, in maybe 12 minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, don't take too long. You don't have to rush or race, but try to finish in a reasonable amount of time. When you're done, come back and I'll go through the story with you. Good luck. Go ahead. All right, let's review the story. When the Johnson family bought their first computer several years ago, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson were thrilled, very happy, very excited that their children had access to so much information, they could get so much information through the internet. Now though, though is like, however, it's change, opposite. However, mo, 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 though, now though, before the X, now Y, now before different. They're not as excited, thrilled, excited. At the beginning, thrilled, now though, not thrilled, not so excited. Our family spends more time surfing the internet than communicating with each other, complains Mr. Johnson. The Johnson family is not alone in this situation. They're not the only family. Many families all over the world have this trouble. According to research by the Annenberg Center for the Digital Future at the University of Southern California in 2006, 11% of Americans said they were spending less time with their families. Last year, the number almost tripled to 28%. It seems that as internet use becomes more popular, goes up, the amount of family time decreases, goes down. Uh, many parents are concerned about this reduction, decrease, decrease, reduction. Notice the synonyms, they are connected in the time the family sp their families spend together. And Michael Gilbert agrees. He is a researcher at the Annenberg Center. Most people think of the internet and our digital future as boundless, unlimited synonym. Boundless, 
no boundary, no end, no limit, unlimited. And I do too, Gilbert said. However, he added, it can't be a good thing that families are spending less face-to-face -face time together. As technology becomes more advanced, it often changes the ways that families interact. This is not a new concern. It's not the first time. It's not new. It happened before. Uh, when televisions first became popular in the 1950s, parents worried that their children were watching too much TV and spending too little time talking with their parents. However, there is a significant, uh, important difference. Significant means important or key or even big difference between these two activities. Watching TV can be done as a family while surfing the internet is often a solitary activity. Sol one, alone. Solo, S-O-L-O, -O, alone, singing alone, solo. Living alone, solo, traveling alone, solo traveling, solitary activity. Furthermore, the internet isn't the only modern technology pushing families apart. Many children today have cell phones. Although they help parents to keep track of, follow, watch their children, cell phones also give children more privacy. Sometimes they have too much privacy. When I was a teenager, Mrs. Johnson says, my friends telephoned me at home. Uh, my parents always knew who was calling me. Home phone, when I grew up, we had a home phone, one phone for the whole house. When I got a call, my mom would answer, Ted, uh, who's this? Okay. Everybody knew who was calling. And then I had to talk quietly because people could see me and listen and no privacy. Now with a cell phone, you have a lot of privacy. It's just you and your phone. <clears throat> From 2000 to 2005, people spent about 26 hours each month with their families. A few years later, that number dropped, decrease, down, fall down, decrease, reduce <clears throat> to about 18 hours, according to the Annenberg study. In addition to <clears throat> reduced, dropped, reduced, decrease, all synonyms. Face-to-face -face time among all family members, women say that they feel ignored by a family uh, internet user. In fact, in fact, plus very special information, interesting information, almost half, Ushipuro, almost half say they are sometimes they're often ignored. Wow, that's a lot. That's very interesting information. Well, fewer than 40% of men feel this way. <clears throat> Gilbert said, people report spending less time with family members as social networks like Facebook, Twitter, and MySpace are booming, growing, doing very well, increasing, becoming very popular. However, not all young people enjoy the new technology that allows them to be in contact with their friends around the clock, all day, all night, literally around the clock, all hours, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, around the clock. Stephen Cho, a college student, is one of them. Every summer he works at a camp <clears throat> in upstate New York. The camp has very little internet access. It's nice to get away from the internet for a few weeks every summer, says Stephen. I can relax and do other things like play music, read, or be with my friends. Although he spends a lot of time on the internet during the school year, he is happy to have a break from it. It gets very tiring sometimes, he adds. The internet is here to stay and so are cell phones. Here to stay, permanent, never leaving. The internet will not disappear one day. It's here permanently. It will never go. It is here to stay. And so are cell phones. How will families change in the future as technology competes with their time together? There you see the picture the husband is busy on his computer. The wife is sad. She feels neglected. She feels lonely. She feels ignored. Very common situation with families, husband and wife, you know, children, everybody. Right? The computer is separating people. The TV actually kept people together. 
So did radio when it first came out. Computers, not so much. Number one, the main idea, A, family time decreases as technology increases or becomes more popular. Number two, thrilled, excited. We talked about that, excited. They were thrilled, but now, however, now though, not so excited. Excited, thrilled. Number three, A, uh, two, children spend too much time on the internet. And B, they are, number one, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. They are the parents, not the family, the parents, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, mother and father. Number four, A, many other families have the same problem. They're not alone, not only them. Many families, not only them, many other families. So they're not alone in that situation, A. Number five, reduction, three, reduce, go down, decrease, become less. B, who is Michael Gilbert? Three, a technology researcher, three. Num number five, three and three. Number six, unlimited, boundless, unlimited, no limit, no boundary. Number seven, A, significant difference, big difference. Uh, and that is families do not usually use the internet together, but they can watch TV together. That's a big difference. That's a significant difference. TV brings families together. It can. Computers, not so much. Much more of an individual activity. Number eight, solitary means alone. C, you do it alone. Solo, S-O-L-O, -O, alone. Number nine, A, Stephen Cho, he is Stephen Cho. B, it is the internet. And C, have a break from, get away from. A is one, B is two, C is one. One, two, one. And number 10 is C. People will always have cell phones and computers. They are here to stay. Parts B and C. Now, we did this last week with chapter 10. So, first you do part B. You fill in the chart with the information. Then you do part C. You use the information in part B to answer the questions in part C. One, two, three, four, five, and stop. Don't do the summary, okay? So page 150, part B, fill in the chart. Page 151, part C, one, two, three, four, five, stop. Go ahead and do that now. Uh, when you're finished, <clears throat> come back. Hit pause, do the work, come back. I'll review it for you, with you, when you're done. Go ahead. <clears throat> okay, uh, part B, F problem. Families do not, today do not spend a lot of time together. 1950s, technology, TV, and home phone. TV and home phone, right? We talked about cell phone is also a very big difference. Technology today, internet and cell phones. So internet, uh, television, and cell phone, home phone. How it affected family time. Uh, people watch TV instead of talking to their family, but they could watch TV together with their family. How it affects family time today. Uh, internet and cell phones are solitary. Solitary activities, more private. Solitary and private. The differences in the effect of technology on families in the 1950s and today, families could watch TV together and the house phone was shared. You shared the phone. You could hear each other talk. You knew who they were talking to, not private. Individual, but not private. Results of the Annenberg study from 2000 to 2005, Families spent an hour, average of 26 hours a month together, almost an hour a day. A few years later, 18 hours a month, a little more than 30 minutes a day. Big drop, big change from 26 hours a month to 18 hours a month. Wow. Conclusion. Okay, you can word this anyway. Families spend less time together 
as technology advances. As technology improves, family time goes down. You can say it like that. As technology increases, family time decreases. Anything that says technology up, family time down. Anything that says that, that's the main point. That's the conclusion. Part C, now we just answer the questions based on your answers for part B. Number one, 50s technology, TV, uh, home phone, technology today, internet, cell phone. Number two, uh, how did it, technology affect family time in the 1950s? They watched TV, they watched together, they watched as a family. Uh, talking less with family, but watching TV together with their families. How does technology affect family time today? Well, the internet and cell phone are private, solitary, two key words, private, more private, and definitely more solitary. You do, do it alone, you use them alone. Number three, the biggest difference between 50s technology and technology today uh, TV and home phone are shared, interactive, you do it together, and computers and uh, cell phones are very solitary. So 1950s were more together as a family, technology today is very solitary, very, very uh, uh, private. That's the big difference, the significant difference. Biggest difference, significant difference. Number four, what were the results of the Annenberg study? Uh, average family time dropped from 26 hours a month to 18 hours a month. 26 to 18, dropped, reduced, decreased, anything like that. Number five, what conclusion can we draw as a result of the Annenberg study? Again, uh, any, anything that says as, as uh, technology uh, improves, family time goes down. Technology up, family time down. Anything that says that is the right answer, all right answer. That's the main point of this story. As technology gets better, family time gets less and less. And it's happening all over the world. It's affecting any, uh, the whole world. And I'm not sure it's a really good thing. I think it's important that families spend time together. Hmm, where is this going? Nobody knows. Homework. Okay, first of all, as I already gave you homework, as I already assigned you, uh, you must do G, page 142. Bek Sasha G, number one and number two, give two examples or two reasons for each two ideas for each, two and two. That's your written homework. Your other homework is uh, page 152 to 156. D, E, F, I, and page 158, 159, I. Again, D, chapter 11, D, E, F, I, D-E-F-I from chapter 11, and I'll review it next week. You can ask questions if you have any. Make sure you get all the work done, listening lab done, homework done, your written homework done. Put your written homework on your email to me. Tell me you've done the listening lab. Tell me you've done the work here. Tell me you've done the homework and ask any questions if you have any questions. Our listening lab Final test will be in two weeks. I'll give you more information about that uh, next week. Just for now, you should be reviewing Listening Lab materials from the beginning of the semester, from Unit 1. Okay, everyone, that's all for this week. Great job. Uh, thanks for your hard work. Good luck with your homework. Have a great week. I look forward to hearing from you uh, by email uh, in the next few days. Bye-bye, everyone.